Okay, so moving on, tax bills are how they collect this money. They send those out. You figured the math. We just figured the math on how they did it. And uh, they send out the tax bills. And then what happens is everybody pays their taxes by the due date, right? If you fail to pay your taxes, your house goes to the tax lien sale. Now, we've touched on this once before. We're going to do it again. In the tax lien sale, everybody calls it a tax sale. It's technically a tax lien sale because you're buying the state's fourth position in that example. It goes to sale. Whoever buys it buys that position. Now, we touched on this, but let's go through it again. Up until the day of the sale, you have the right to go in and pay your outstanding amount of money, which is fair. So that would be called what? What right of redemption? Equitable. Equitable because it's based on value. What do you owe? I owe 12,500, that was my tax deal we just did. Haven't paid it, I gotta go in and pay my 12,500. That will take me out of the tax lien sale. After the tax lien sale happens for 365 days, at least in the state of Indiana, you have the right to go in by law and exercise what type of redemption? Statutory, statutory because that's what by law is. There is a statutory right of redemption, which allows me to go in and buy the property back and pay the late fee and pay the investor some return on his money, but I can buy it back. If I fail to redeem it on that 366th day, that's when all the liens get wiped away, the house is gone, and it goes to whoever bought that fourth position, the investor, and they get the property with no liens on it. All right? In general, that's how that works. So they have the equitable right of redemption up until the sale. We have a law for statutory right of redemption for after the sale. Remember, on secured loans called a foreclosure, Indiana does not practice the statutory right of redemption. At the sheriff's sale, house is gone. Some states practice it, we don't. So in practice, are you, if you buy a property at a tax lien sale, are you buying an empty house? In, no. In practice, are you buying an empty house? The answer is maybe. Because that person that lives there still has the right to redeem it. You have an uninsurable interest. You can't walk into the house and go, hey, how about this? Because you're buying a lien, and a lien is what? How do we start this whole chapter? It's a future interest. It's not actual ownership. All right? It's, it, it's an interest in property. They could actually still be living in the house, and they could exercise their right right up until the 364th day. All right? And literally, you'd have to stand in the street and watch them kick holes in the drywall. All right? You have to wait till your lien becomes, comes to fruition is the best way to say that. So the, a bank wouldn't like foreclose and kick them out? If they had a, a foreclose is a different thing. Okay. Now, in practicality, since you want to talk about this in the real world, uh -huh. most of the time the bank will foreclose long before the state gets them for a tax. Because the bank is, you, you know, you're four or five months late, they start the process. Not, I've never had this, so it's not my personal recollection, but I'm telling you, in general, the state, you usually have to be three to four years behind before they actually start coming after you. In that time, the foreclosures probably already happened. So in the real world, foreclosure happens longer or faster than the tax sale will happen. Now, if they don't have a mortgage on the property, then obviously, yeah, that, that therein lies an issue. Yes? My grandmother passed away and I was six when you know, the taxes were paid in arrears. So in 08, I just happened to find a new following certified letter that it was put in the tax 
Yeah. And I was trying not to impeach him. I was trying. So I had to scramble and come up with this. Yeah, so your grandmother's house was put in. You found the letter after she passed away, but you were nine months in, so you still had some time. Yeah. But now you got to pay the taxes plus some. Bring it all yeah, you got to bring it all current. Yeah, and typically what they also want, and I don't want to get into the nuts and bolts of it, the investor also has to pay the current year's taxes. So not only did they buy it for the outstanding lien, you also got to pay this year's taxes. So there's another bill on top of that. But we're not going to get into the technicality of it. <clears throat> okay, the second type of real estate tax is this thing called a special assessment tax. A special assessment tax is a one-time tax. Now, that one-time tax can be collected over several years, but the tax was only one time, okay? So if they say, look, in this housing addition that we have, we're gonna put a sewer system in and it's gonna cost a million dollars, we are going to assess you guys for the bill, but that would be way too high, so we're gonna spread it out over 10 years. The tax is one time, even though the payments are spread out, so don't get confused on that. Special assessment's a one-time tax. Maybe it's a one-time bill. Maybe it's spread out just based on the points. It's a special thing that happens. And it's used to fund public improvements like new sewers, the sidewalk, we're gonna upgrade you, put the road in, do whatever we're going to do, and we're gonna bill you for that. And they can bill you in two ways. The easiest, most common way is to say, hey, the bill's a million dollars, there's 10 of you out there, you're all gonna pay 100 grand for this upgrade. That better be a great upgrade. <laughs> They would just simply divide it by ten, the number of users and say that's it. Now there is another way to do it, and that is what they call pro rata fashion by your benefit. And what I mean by that is some of you are sitting two people to a desk. Some of you are sitting one to a desk. The person sitting one to a desk is getting twice the benefit, so they would pay twice the amount. And a good example would be a new sidewalk. You know, if you've got a property that's 50 foot wide and someone else's property is 100 foot wide, they're getting twice the benefit of a sidewalk than you get. They may pay twice what you pay. So they would divide it by, instead of 10 users, there's 12 lots. Two of you got, so they would say, oh, let's divide it by 12. You got two of them, you're paying twice. You're only paying one because you're sharing, you're only paying one. But you're paying two, you're paying two, you're paying two, because you've got more benefit. Typically, water's not one of them because they say that every that a household gets the same benefit, which we know is not true. I mean, I got six kids, you got no kids. We're going to get more benefit. But typically, they would say, oh, no, that's pretty even. Sidewalks. And roads are the two where they go, oh, well, you got more benefit of the road, or you use more of it. So they'll do that with that. Now, other liens, let's talk about some other liens. I want to go back and talk about, now let's talk about general liens. We talked about specific liens were attached to one piece of property, and it's specific to that. The second type of lien is a general lien. General attaches to real property and personal property. If you have a general lien, it's going to attach to your home that you live in, your cabin, your rental property, your car, your boat, your motorcycle, your Frisbee, your silver, silverware, your two dogs, and your four children. It, no, well. <laughs> it attaches to everything. A lot of times you will hear this term called in persona or in person, in person, 
in persona, meaning it's against you. Not only does it attach, it also attaches to you. Okay? The thing you need to understand about general, it's always and only involuntary. Remember specific liens, we had voluntary and involuntary and that vendor. Now in a general lien, it's always involuntary. Someone does it to you. It gains its value from two different methods. Guess what they are? Equitable and statutory, just like the others. The equitable one means money or fair. Guess it's always done to you, so it's done by a court. Therefore, it has a term, and who presides over the court? The judge. That's where the term of judgment comes from which is equitable. It's a judgment that comes against your person that says you owe money. It's a decree issued by the court. Sometimes you are called a money judgment. But let's say Paula hits my dog, and I've got an English bulldog, so I'm going to sue her for 10 grand, take her to court. The very first thing I would do, think back, what was that other thing earlier we talked about? File what we call the Liz Pendants. The Liz Pendants, because what I don't want is her to find out that I'm going to sue her and her start selling all her free and clear cars and houses and all that stuff like that. So I will perform this sneak attack or have my attorney file this Liz Pendant which Liz Pendens means litigation pending, all right? Ironically, here's the funny thing. It's a future lawsuit in a future interest of property. So it's a future future. It's a future lawsuit in a lien, which is a future interest. So it's a future future. It's kind of like putting instant coffee in a microwave. You actually go backwards in time when you do that. Anybody ever flown to St. Louis? You get there a minute before you land. That works out really great because one day I forgot my toothbrush. So when I landed, I called myself and said, hey, don't forget my toothbrush. It works. I got to the hotel and it was in my bag. So it must have worked. <laughs> Lambert Air Force. Or Lambert Airport, yeah. See, there's a time change in there for you guys. That's a cerebral joke. Okay. Well, it happened when I just got back from Vegas. I got to Vegas in one hour. It took me 10 hours to come home. I wanted that same airplane to come back. So the Liz Pendens allows me to then go out and seek all of the stuff. Now, I told you it attaches to all, everything, real and personal. But really what it attaches to are things that we use a title to transfer. Technically, yeah, I would go against her silverware and her Frisbees, but I can't really track that. But we can track cars and boats and airplanes and motorcycles and rental properties and cabins and timeshares and all that because we track all those sales through deeds and titles and stuff. Um, so that Liz Pendens is a way to stop her from doing that. Now, let me change audios. <laughs> 